Okay, so it is about 101 degrees outside, and I'm not joking. I don't want to be outside. So I figured, hey, it's summertime. At least for me, it's still summertime with summer heat. So let's cook a summer crop in the kitchen. Let's make something out of it. And why not do okra? Okra is as southern of a summer crop as you can get. And there is a recipe of my mom's that I want to share with y'all. So if you've never had okra stew or okra soup, depending on how you call it, sit back, relax, check this one out. All right, so okra is one of those vegetables that I think you either love or you hate. It definitely has some issues, textures and things of that nature, but if you love okra, as I'm assuming you do if you're watching this video, then you should totally try this recipe. Now, I went ahead and printed it off. <laughs> I don't have it like handwritten or anything, so I printed it off. My mom's modified it a little bit and made it her own. Now, she's getting all the credit for the okra, not me. This is her recipe, but I wanna share it with everybody. So before we continue, let's go out in the garden and actually harvest okra because I have it growing. And isn't that the best thing about growing your own stuff or having your own garden is you can go out there, pick it, harvest it, bring it in and use it. I mean, yeah. So let's go out into this heat and grab this okra. Oh, it is so hot today. All right, let's harvest <laughs> the okra. I have a lot for sure. So we got a lot of these orange jings, Clemsons, Alabama reds right there, emeralds, just lots of okra. Plus, plus all these dwarf okras that need to be harvested. All right, y'all, I'm really curious to see how much this weighs. I'm guessing around three pounds. Just a guess, not really sure. Let's give it a shot. Well, let's not have it in grams, Chad. Let's do pounds and ounces. So 2.67 pounds, so just under three. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, real quick, this one is an Alabama red. This one is an orange jean. You can see the difference in the color. That's how you know. This one was from the dwarf okra, which looks almost identical to the emerald, which is that one. And then these were the Clemson spineless. So five different types of okra that we're going to put in this stew. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put the entire recipe down below in the description for everyone to follow along. But for the okra, we need about a pound and a half to two pounds, which we have more than enough. And what I wanna do is start chopping these up. Now, I'm going to use all these different types of okra in this stew. Should be really cool. I love having all these different types. And what you want if you're new to growing okra is you wanna get them about two to three inches long. You can go up to four to five inches, which we will cover later on what you can do with those as everything is simmering. But for right now, we're just gonna focus on these. Two to three, four inches is perfect. Anything north of that becomes a bit of an issue, but we're gonna go ahead and wash all these and then start chopping them up. Also, when you wash them, they will get a slimy texture. It's just the way it is. Um, that's an okra thing. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, one thing before we start chopping these up that I want to mention, and I'll put a link to a video on this subject right here, but this is the stage or the length that you want if you're going to pickle your okras and you're going to can them. This stage right here, two to three inches is perfect. It's still pliable, soft, and when you put them in there and you can them, they will stay 
actually pretty crunchy and good. So this stage for canning also. <clears throat> All right, so let's chop these up. Let's wash them, chop them up. It's to sit them off to the side while the bacon is in there getting the drippings going. Once the drippings are done, we're gonna go ahead and saute the onions in those drippings in the pan and get this party rolling. This does not take a long time, y'all. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm sorting out the soft ones, the ones that I feel will be just fine in the stew. The ones that are too big or too rigid, again, I'm gonna show you what we can do with those here shortly. Okay, one thing I want to say about okra, if you've never harvested your own okra or grown your own okra, those plants have barbs on them. The leaves, the stems, the stalk, the pods have little barbs on them. They're incredibly, incredibly hard to see, but when they get in your skin, you know it. Like washing them, I just got some and they're driving me nuts. So I want to warn you all, okra definitely has a, uh, comes with protection for itself. Okay, so we're gonna start with these little ones, take the back end off. And then I like to do just about half inch little cuts. And I'll, just like that. All right, so as you can see, we got plenty of okra. But I'm telling you right now, this bacon smells great. So I'm gonna go and check it real quick. And if it's ready to rock and roll, we're gonna continue moving on. Okay, so that was quite a bit of bacon grease, but hey, it's bacon grease, right? We're gonna throw the onions in, start sauteing it, and I put the bacon back in the oven because I also need four pieces of crispy bacon for this recipe, so. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and saute up these onions for about five to seven minutes by themselves, just until they start to get soft. Then we're gonna add in the okra and do the same thing, about five to seven minutes with the okra in here. And then y'all, we just start adding all the other ingredients. So while those are sauteing, I went ahead and opened the cans for the other ingredients. We've got the okra sitting right there. The bacon is still going. So we got everything rolling. We're about to uh, kick this into third gear, I guess. <laughs> Be right back. Y'all, the smell. Woo yes. Yo, we're gonna check the onions real quick. It's been about six minutes. Yeah, they're about good to go for me. Let's go ahead and add in this okra. I am excited. All right, add the okra in. Let's get all of them in there. You want to make sure you get everything good and coated so they can continue sauteing, softening up a bit. Yeah. Okay, seriously, how good does that look? Look at the different colors. Oh man, this is going to be good to go. <laughs> okay, while all that sautés, let me go over the, the recipe. Now, I know I said I'm putting it all down and below in the description, which I do, which I have, but while we got a few minutes here, let me go over a few things. You need bacon, bacon drippings, the onion I already talked about, a can of whole corn. Now, you can go get the normal yellow corn, whatever. Now, I personally like the shoe peg corn. I don't know what it is about this corn. I just like it more than like the yellow corn, yellow kernel corns. So modify your recipe to whatever suits you, whatever floats your boat, but that's the corn I like. One to one and a half to two pounds of okra, two cans of stewed tomatoes. Oh, one thing, the corn, you wanna drain it. You, you don't put the, the juice in. Then you're gonna use your seasonings. Pepper, you can use lemon pepper if you want. We, I just use pepper. A little bit of sugar, two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of ketchup. And it says for half a cup of chicken broth, but 
Because the broth cooks off the way it does, I'll just do the whole 32 ounces of chicken broth. And uh, you use whatever chicken broth you like. I like the less sodium one. I don't need all that salt. And that's literally all the ingredients. It's really not a lot, right? It's not that, not that much. The rest of it is we're just gonna add everything together here in a few minutes once these are ready. And then we're just simmering for 45 minutes. Y'all, th this does not take a long time. Probably total, including the simmering, hour, hour and five minutes. And then however long it takes you to harvest. <laughs> or, you know, you can also go to your store and get your frozen okra also. Or your fresh okra and then cut it the way I did. Either way, you just need to get okra. However you want to do it. Fresh is always better though. Okay, so let me cover something real quick. Okra does have a slime to it. I'm going to put the name of that specific term up right here on the screen it is just something that is totally an okra thing so as you're stirring it like I'm going to show you here in a second you will see what a lot of people consider slime now that will turn a lot of people off I get that but if you're watching at this point in the video you don't care about it like I don't and you're just gonna it's just part of eating okra so but if you're not used to eating okra and you're still at this point in the video, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, as we're moving it around, you see, you see what I'm talking about there? That is something that is off-putting to a lot of people. Just keeping it real, being transparent. Me, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I'm used to it. But, just wanted to do full disclosure there. Okay, I've pulled it off the burner because anytime I add everything, I always take whatever I'm cooking off the burner. But this is the point where we're going to go ahead and start adding all the other ingredients. So two cans of the stewed tomatoes. Remember the corn needs to be drained before you put it in. I'm gonna go ahead and like I said, do the entire, the entire thing of chicken broth here. Okay, it calls for two tablespoons of ketchup. Good enough. <laughs> Some sugar. Two tablespoons of sugar. Now, I know what y'all are saying. Hey, you're not measuring anything. This isn't baking. We're just cooking. <laughs> so I kind of go with what I feel I need to go with. One teaspoon of pepper. Again, you can use lemon pepper if you want. I like pepper, so I'm gonna put a little bit more in. All right, so we're gonna move this to the back and I'm gonna get out the bacon. That should be ready by now. Okay, well, I thought I had that recording, <laughs> but there's the bacon. We're going to let this cool down for just a few minutes, and then I'm going to chop it up real quick, throw it in. Again, it's four pieces of crisp, crumbled bacon. Now, this could be a little bit crispier, but to me, it's just fine. I'm going to get that in there. Okay, y'all, we are going to stir it all up. We're going to put it on a medium heat, you know, two or three, if uh, is what I usually go with. We're going to, I'm going to cover it, and we're going to wait 45 minutes. But look at how good that looks right there. Yes, please. So normally I'd say, hey, I'll be right back in 45 minutes. But while that's simmering and doing its thing, I mentioned toward the beginning of the video that I would explain what you could do with okra pods that are just a little too fibrous when you harvest them, like this one. If we were to cut into this one right now, it would kind of sound like we're sawing. That's not how you want to use okra, especially in this way. You want to slice right through like I was showing earlier. But you can do something with these pods. now. If your okra pods are so hard that you could bust a hole in the wall with them, 
Y'all, there's, there, there's two things you can do with these. Well, three things. You can throw them away. I would say compost them, but throw them away. You can dry them out and use the seeds for planting at another time. Or you could actually use the seeds out of these to put in there right now. So two things I'm going to show you real quick. Now, I do have an entire video specifically on what I just talked about that my mom came up with in this kitchen, I think it was like two years ago, using this microwave right here. So if you wanna see an in-depth on that whole process, check this link right here. But let's start with this. It's too hard to cut into, but if you microwave these for about 20 to 40 seconds, depends on what, how soft you want them, then you'll be able to use these again and use them in there. It does require that extra step though. You got a microwave. Let me show you. Let's just go 40 seconds. Not that yet. Okay. What you're waiting to hear is a pop. So, well, let's scoot back a little bit because that's kind of annoying to try to look in there. But you're going to hear a pop. There it was at 20 seconds. Now I'm gonna let this go the full 40 seconds and I'm gonna show you just how soft this pot is. I'm not gonna do any breaks here. I want you all to see exactly what I'm doing. So there's no editing issues. <laughs> okay. Now let's be real, that thing is blazing hot. So be real careful. And yes, my microwave is a little messy. No judgment. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take it out. Oh Lord. Okay. And without this burning me, that pop you heard was the seam opening up right there. And you can see the seeds inside. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna sit this right here. I'm gonna move the camera onto a different stand. I don't know how to do this with y'all watching. Okay, y'all, I tried to do no, no edits there, no stops, but the camera literally flipped right off the tripod. So this is it right here. Use the exact same knife. Use the exact same knife I was using earlier. Now watch how easy we can cut right through this. Look at that, y'all. Super, super soft and very, very hot. Look at that, right through. Whereas earlier, that would have been very, very hard. And the seeds inside have actually become soft. Same seeds, right there. Now you can eat them. So, I love the flavor of okra. So that pod that I mentioned earlier, that was too hard to do anything with. If you take the seeds out of here, put them on a paper towel by themselves, just the seeds, nuke them, same thing, about 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds on the seeds. And you add them into the stew, guess what? You just added more okra flavor to the stew and you added a whole different texture element to the stew just by using the seeds out of a pod that you can't do anything with. So I hope that gave you an idea of what you can do with okra if you don't catch them right away. Because let's be real, if you've grown okra, you know, once they start putting pods on y'all, you gotta be out there every day. You miss one day and your okra will go from this big to that big in one day. In two days, you're, you're like this. Okra grows so fast, it is absolutely insane. So if your okra plants do get away from you a little bit, there are stuff you can do with them. There is still stuff you can do with them. And last year, the year before last, I actually canned the seeds themselves, by themselves, in jars, just the seeds. Because I had so many huge okras, I couldn't do, or okra pods, I couldn't do anything with. 
So I canned them and then I used them in other things. They're great if you wanna just add a little bit of an okra flavor to anything. Use those little seeds, but make sure you soften them up because they can be pretty doggone hard, um, especially in here. So, fun fact, fun little tidbit that my mom came up with two years ago. So, she gets all the credit, not me. And I always give her the credit. So now, <laughs> we've got about 30 minutes left till that is done. And now I'll be right back. Okra stew is finally done. I let it go for about an hour. Um, I was talking to my mom and she actually lets it go hour and a half to two hours. So you can do whatever range you want. I let it go a little longer because honestly I got sidetracked. <laughs> but check this out. All right, y'all. Tell me that doesn't look good. Mm. Trust me, it is. I've already had a little bit. But we're going to go and scoop up a bowl, give it a taste. And y'all, we're done. Oh boy, does that look good right there. Okay, so before I try this, yes, you can add extra meats. My mom will use canned chicken. You can use pretty much anything you want. Sausage, you can add stuff to it. I kept this as simple and basic as possible, just adding a little bacon. And uh, man, this is hot. Towel under it so I can actually hold it while we eat it. Ooh, Lord. Okay. Now, one thing that's funny, and just like with beans, whenever you cook the different colored beans, a lot of time those colorings will come out of them, out of the beans. Same with the okra. You can't really tell that there's different colored okra in here at all. <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right, let's get a mouthful. It'll be so good. Mm. Wow. So that has a really good, that has a really good vegetable flavor. Uh, you can definitely taste the okra, obviously. Uh, you taste the onions really well also, and you can actually get the bacon. Now I could have added a lot more bacon. And you can add whatever you want, whatever levels you want. I just strictly went off the basic uh, recipe. But the okra is super tender. With a, I mean, it's definitely tender with a little crunch, if that makes any sense. Which in my mind, it does. Man, that has such a good flavor, y'all. Wow. I'm totally gonna finish that bowl off camera. Okay, everyone, so that's the video. Okra stew is a really good meal. This is totally a meal you can eat when it's cold outside, like you would chili. It's a very hearty meal. This one is more of a vegetable forward, obviously, um, recipe, but again, you can add meats to it. You don't have to stick to, to what I did. And if you took the bacon out and went just strictly with the other recipes, I don't know if that's considered vegan or vegetarian or what. I don't know the specifics on all that, but it's definitely still a really good vegetable type soup or slash stew. Very, very good. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you've never eaten okra in any other way than fried, Give this a shot. You might hate it, <laughs> just keeping it real, but you also might love it. So give it a shot, especially if you're gonna grow okra. I always grow okra every year, because one, it's very easy to grow where I am down here in zone 9A, um, and, and it grows just so well. And I also use the okra by canning them, like I mentioned earlier in the video. So there's a lot of ways to use okra. I hope this was a recipe that if you've never tried, you're willing to try. Now my friend Dale over on Old Southern Kitchen and Garden um, is giving me a little bit of uh, grief because I don't have cornbread baked with it. Y'all, I don't do cornbread, never have, never can, not my thing. But 
that is a good idea. Throw some cornbread because I know it's good for. I know some people like it. I don't, but other people do. Um, me, I would use biscuits with this. I mean, he mentions cornbread. I'd use biscuits because I love me a good flaky biscuit. Let's be real, right? Yeah. So I'm in this video out here in the garden because I mean, this is where it all where it all is, right? Seriously, look at that okra right there. Woo. Now this is too big to use the way I just did those, but that one. But that one right there is perfect. Y'all take care, God bless. Continue to shine bright, harvest hard. I hope this gives you an idea on a different way to use okra. It is really good. I'll talk to y'all again real soon. Bye.